Hola! We are currently in Porto in Portugal. Maria and I and Halo are well into our second month of travel and work as we uh, move through uh, different parts of Europe traveling from Australia and we thought because now we have a bit of experience on this we have taken Halo traveling when she was five months old we did three months in Europe and then again now when she is 17 months old we thought it could be helpful in this video to share with you our advice for traveling international with a toddler so we are about to now head to uh, the main like famous bridge in Porto so along the way we thought we would share our top tips um, and share some advice for any other parents out there about to embark on any sort of international travel with a baby or toddler and hopefully these uh, tips will make your life a lot easier just make it more enjoyable along the way because you'll be more prepared Wow. All right, we just stopped to get Halo a quick snack. That's probably where I'll share our first tips is on the food. So when Halo was a baby, the first time we traveled, she was just um, drinking milk and we didn't do any pumping or bottles. So all we needed was me and my boobs and she was fine um, whereas now we've got to be like way more onto our snacks and obviously through Europe everything is just so bread heavy and so pastry heavy that we try and get protein snacks as much as possible so and then also having fruit on hand so as soon as we arrive somewhere we will definitely go to the supermarket or if we can find an organic market we'll grab some organic fruit and keep that on us things like bananas apples that i know she eats very easily to always have as an option for her and then when we go to the supermarket try and get like the cheese sticks uh, of uh, like little cheese and then it comes with little sticks that's a great option we've found or just some really simple plain bickies that she can have as a snack for times that we're a bit desperate so when she doesn't want to get into the pram for example we might just give her a little snack and then she's happy to sit down in the pram and so we found just always having snacks on hand uh, is just so much better especially when for example in Europe restaurants are often closed on a Monday on Sunday or sometimes they don't open till 7 30 so the place that you thought you'd be able to have dinner at you might get there and it's closed and then when you have a hungry child that's not great to have so you know if you've got something on hand to just get them over the edge so they can have some sort of at least protein that's what we go for and then if as much as we can when we do go to a place we try and get some like red meat or things like that that are going to make sure give her some good protein sources some iron nutrients things like that so um, that's our approach to food when we're on the plane when we were in coming from Australia I think we made some meatballs we also like bringing boiled eggs lots of different different snacks we uh, actually found um, these really like soft jerky bars that were really helpful um, I think they were called chief uh, they were great for the plane and then obviously when we're doing uh, from country to country that gets a little bit harder because you can't be as prepared we don't like getting the plain food because when you've got a baby on your lap uh, and then they give you the plain food you have to sit there with their food and you can't doesn't go away until they finished um, collecting it or when it's their time to collect it so uh, we don't get the plain food we just make sure we're really prepared with snacks and we've got options for her to eat while we're there so that it's much easier for her to sleep on us and we're not getting kind of stuck in the chair
Okay, we are just crossing over the bridge. Look at the amazing views. It's a beautiful day and we're pretty lucky, although it's actually pretty busy. I guess the afternoon's a pretty busy time of day to come check it out. But anyway, it's definitely worth it. So we've just crossed the bridge now and we have found a jardin, uh, that's a garden, a park that has a playground in it. And that brings me to my next tip is when you arrive at a new destination, especially when you've got kids, is you want to suss out where the playgrounds are. So especially if your accommodation is cozy and they're going to need to release some energy, you're going to want to know where the parks are, where the playgrounds are, because once you know that, then you can usually start your day going to the playground, having a bit of uh, time there, giving the kids a little play, and then you can head to the exact destination that you want to head to. So we'll usually just find that like Google search playgrounds and um, pin them so that we know where the nearby playgrounds are. And then also just a tip on if you're staying in things like Airbnbs, definitely make sure that before you fully settle in, you just make sure that they are baby proof, I guess. Um, one of the things you want to check before you book is things like the level of your Airbnb, like where we are staying now, we're actually on the fifth level, which is obviously not ideal when you've got a pram and a baby, just makes things that much harder. But of course we love the, the physical challenge, so that's absolutely fine. But I do recommend checking that especially, um, just making sure that accessibility to the place is like pram friendly. But then also when you get there, checking for things like glass stuff that could be out. Like we had an incident where Halo knocked over a lamp next to the bed and it smashed onto the ground. Like you just, we should have removed that as soon as we saw it. So just before you get to the Airbnb or boy, as soon as you get in, just put all the things up high that they could uh, basically ruin. <laughs> okay, now Halo is playing in the playground. I can sit down and share another tip with y'all. So let's talk about flying. Some tips with flying especially. Um, number one, when you book your flight, if your baby is under two, uh, that you don't have to pay, but you do have to still register them. So you'll, you'll book your flight, say you've got an infant that will sit on your lap. I always then call the airline after I've made the booking and then just make sure that they uh, have put us in uh, a seat with a bassinet. Even though Halo is too big now for the bassinet, it just means you've got that space with the extra leg room. Uh, and then if you do want the bassinet, you can always use the bassinet for things like changing nappies or just to put your stuff. There are some pros and cons to that seat. The pros is it is extra leg room. You're not as squished as everyone else. The cons is you can't put anything under the seat in front of you when you have those seats, which is a little bit annoying uh, because it just means that, you know, all their bits and bobs you have to store away until the seatbelt signs off and then you can bring it down. So you still have to be quite organized. Make sure there is a bag that you put above. That's really easy to access of just things like snacks and stuff that you need really quickly. Also remembering when you bring a child onto a plane, you do get priority access. So things like customs, going through customs, uh, usually there's a separate line for um, families with children under a certain age. It might be under five or seven or something like that, where you can skip the big main line and just go to the priority uh, priority line. So that makes things a little bit faster. And then also when you board the plane, you can, uh, you can go on with the first class business class people. So you can be first to board the plane if you want to. Um, when you board and if you've got a pram, so we've got the baby jogger pram that folds up. You can take the pram through with you. And then right at the end, when you go to check out, uh, when you go to board the plane, you can fold it up, ask them to put it under the plane. You can still take it all the way up until you're about to board the plane. In terms of timings, I just realized that 
Halo isn't going to sleep while we're in that kind of airport transit. So number one, make sure you avoid long transits, but also try and book times where you know it's like nighttime. I always book the nighttime flight because it means that she's going to sleep the majority of the flight, which just makes life so much easier. And if you do have a daytime flight, I try and book it around like the one o'clock if I can, because it means that she can just take a, have a sleep. And that has worked so well for us. Pretty much Halo has slept 90% of all the flights we have taken her on and that's been quite a few so far. In terms of entertaining them for the times that they are awake, what I like to do instead of packing like a lot of toys with me before I go, what I'll do is when we get to the airport, yes I'll have a couple of things but um, things like a few crayons and just a drawing pad. I really like the, the drawing pad where uh, it's the black one and you kind of use a a pen that doesn't actually like make a texture or a pen it just makes a special color on the little blackboard that has been great because it's a no mess drawing tool and she loves that i also find stickers are really great um, because they're just they take she takes her time peeling them off she can put them on anything like a piece of paper or she can put them on her arm um, and I find stickers is another like no mess. It's not like using, you don't have to worry, it's gonna get anywhere. Um, just fun thing for uh, activity. So I'll always take stickers. And then when we get to the airport, we'll usually go to like the uh, store and like get one of like the little kitty magazines or let her pick which one she wants, like a little Peppa Pig um, magazine thing that has like stickers in it maybe a little drawing, activity book or something like that. And I just find the novelty of having something new and simple can be uh, really uh, fun and keep her entertained and kind of engaged for, for that period of time as opposed to bringing something that she's played with like a million times before. We've just sat down to eat along the way we got little girl a banana which saved the day because as I said having that like kind of pre-food always helps in case the food takes a while to get out so I want to share a few essentials that I think we just from experience would not leave home without if we are traveling the first one is the baby seat so some uh, places do have like obviously you can ask a restaurant if they've got a baby seat but even just for home like in the airbnbs and things sometimes they charge if you want a baby seat um, included so we just have one of those camping chairs we bring it with us everywhere so even if we're at a park we're out and about and we need halo to sit and eat she just sits in her little camping chair it means that just making uh you know she might play with her stickers on it at the start or do some drawing and then we can feed her so we take that little camping chair everywhere put it on your chin. what about your nose can you put on your nose oh. <laughs> you have a pint or down the oh mummy's nose. the other thing that we would take with us is our carrier we have um a carrier that we have been using since she was a baby and we take that and the pram and we always take both because you just never know sometimes she wants to be in the carrier and push the pram sometimes she just wants the carrier it also means that if she gets tired uh, we can just hold her and she wants to be held um, we can put her in the carrier and usually she'll just fall asleep in the carrier so that has been really good especially in places like where we are now Portugal the streets are not super pram friendly so some uh, like stints when we go out we don't even take the pram with us we'll just take the carrier and a bag uh, just enough to take some nappies and things like that I will say the pram is useful for changing nappies because you can just lie it flat and then you don't have to worry about trying to find a baby changer we just lie her in the pram and in a corner and quickly change her nappy that way while I'm sitting here we were just chatting with Marty and we were reminded that Taking some sort of like container or lunchbox is always good as well because she might not be super hungry when we're eating 
um, and you know if you're also ordering some protein like ham or cheese or some sort of meat and you can just pack it up and take it with you and then when you get home and then she's a bit peckish you're it's super easy to just give them a nice snack so always carrying a little container a little we've got a little silicon lunch box and we just pack some snacks in there sometimes but also for packing leftovers when you haven't eaten everything in the restaurant hot <laughs> we are now back in our airbnb for the night so it's around eight o'clock we find it a little bit harder to put halo to bed early because everything is open later we're in european summer at the moment so the sun sets later so we just found her bedtime don't fight it while we're away her bedtime is going to be a little bit later and i think being flexible around that uh, is a really good idea when you're traveling because just trying to force it just usually does not work. Um, what we do though is we'll come back to our apartment, get Halo's routine all done together. One of us will put her down and then we usually take turns with that and one of us will go out for an evening walk. So 